argue in that lecture that uh, Nigeria's leaders have missed the opportunities to define what it means to be Nigerian. Uh, yes. you, say you, you say that talks of unity, progress, peace and freedom are not sufficient. Yes. However, when it comes to solution, what you seem to be proposing is another national conference of sorts. I think we've gone beyond national conference. We're now the world's biggest conferencing country in the world. I mean, I'm sure I, we've had to, too many to conferences. I want to read to you what you propose yes. so that our viewers can follow. You say that all our former heads of state, yes. their deputies, former Senate presidents, their deputies, former speakers of the House of Reps, their deputies, former heads of service and secretaries to governments of the Federation, heads of all ethnic associations, yes. heads of all professional bodies, retired service chiefs and inspectors general, should meet and draft a new charter for Nigeria. Isn't that another national conference? That's the point. I'm saying that we have passed the stage of, because when you call it a national conference, you're thinking about nominating people, bringing people. But I went further to say mm -hmm. that what they draft, which is so that we don't lose the experience of those be before us, let them tell us, why do we have to be a nation? What is the purpose of Nigeria? What does somebody get from being a Nigerian? I know what it means to be an American. I know it means I have certain inalienable rights, amongst which is life, liberty, and the, right, and the pursuit of happiness. I, knew, I know what it means to be French. It means liberty. It means fraternité. It means égalité. I know what it means to be British. It means that the fundamental rights that we enjoy today in the world is assured by everybody. And that's why I'm saying, what does it mean to be a Nigerian? It has to mean something, because we are not bound by blood. That is why our first national anthem said, though tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. We need to define that brotherhood, the rules of that engagement. And I thought that if people who have lived in Nigeria, and I mentioned General Gowon, who said the task to keep Nigeria one must be met, you know, we must keep to that task. And I said, okay, we've kept it one. For what purpose? In the MPN days, we talked about one nation, one destiny. Okay, which nation, which destiny are we talking about? Well, what you seem to suggest is that the current dispensation as we have it yes. cannot de deliver the ideals that we seek. Yes, it cannot. It cannot because right from the time I was co-marshal, I went to deliver a lecture at the University of Ibadan, and I titled it Distorted Incentives. I said, so long as incentives are distorted, you can't get people to do the right things. Every human being reacts incentives. We have to create incentive for production. The incentive we have today is for distribution. The incentive of going to Abuja every week to distribute money cannot make it possible for any state to start thinking about how to create wealth. So I think that fundamentally, we need to draw up a new charter. Since our country has made it possible for us to have resources to distribute, what does the Nigerian benefit from being a Nigerian? How is he assured of that nine years of education. All those things that were said in chapter two of our constitution, the directive principles and fundamental, the, or fundamental objectives and directive principles. Why will it not be justiciable? Why will it not be that the purpose of my being Nigerian is that certain rights are assured? You don't think that the National Assembly can have this conversation? So I said, once you have this charter, let's pass it to the National Assembly. Let the National Assembly propose a bill for amendment of our constitution to make it possible for us to replace that chapter two with a justiciable part that is irreducible minimum for Nigerians. To know that we are building a nation where no man is oppressed. And you think that the past national conferences we've had has not addressed that, conf uh, that question? No, they, they have addressed multiple issues, and I think we can draw from all that experience. Mm -hmm. But we need to put in practical terms, what does it mean to be a Nigerian? We need to look to the world and say to them, if you are a Nigerian, you are assured of these certain minimums. If you are a Nigerian and you decide to take over Nigerian citizenship today, this is what is assured of you to be a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is critical that we go ahead to define it because the reason is that the world is changing. We're living in the world where populism, where separation, where homogeneous entities are arising. But we also saw the French in the last election saying, no, we can't, we are French. We know what it means to be French, even if you are Arab, even if you are Muslim and you come to France and you are ready to live in accordance with the French principles of life, we will live with you. We saw the French reaffirm their humanity. And I believe Nigerians will reaffirm that once we see that the idea of federal character is supposed to be a shield, not a sword. It is intended to allow the areas that are not developed to meet up. It's not supposed to stop those who are moving forward. We're turning the federal character into a sword. It's not intended so. Hmm. The whole idea is to let the others come up. I find it interesting that you make reference to the lack of unanimity in talking about restructuring. Yes. Uh, 
if you were to consider that that's perhaps the way to go now what would you recommend that it consists of that restructuring as a term i have always been very skeptical about the idea that if you once you affect the structure then things begin to change because in the 1960s the regional governments that we romanticize that we talk about in the 60s nigeria was great don't forget that by 1963 or so we had created the midwestern region that the Cross River, Ogoja River's agitation, the thief riots have started in the north. There were a lot of protests for minority rights. There were even tensions in the regional government. So at the end of the day, it goes down again to the philosophy of, of the polity, to governance model. I believe very firmly that if our leadership is able to deliver governance to the people, is able to subscribe to a minimum level of behavior, is able to subscribe to a charter that brings back everybody to the table. Now, the structure will be secondary. It will be more of a mechanical thing. But I think that laying too much emphasis on the structure will not solve the fundamental problem.